So today I've got something for you. Today I'm going to show you how to go from this to this. Alrighty, let's get to it. Alright, so here we are in the woodshed. I always remember, wear your mask, this stuff stinks. So what I am actually going to be using too is just, this is just some basic Rust-Oleum aluminum primer. Uh, and this will all be done with a rattle can minus one part, and that will be a clear coat. Uh, the clear coat will be done with the spray gun. And that is because I have something special for the clear coat, and for that I have to use an actual spray gun. So everything else will be a rattle can. So first we're going to do is put this aluminum primer on, and a lot of what I like to do is mainly do about two coats of aluminum primer just to make sure that I've gotten everything. So let me get my mask on and then we'll get started. Okay, so that's the first spray. 
we're going to go ahead and let this dry. Um, a lot of times I like to let this dry almost for at least uh, six to eight hours before recoating. A lot of times I might let it dry overnight. Okay, welcome back. Uh, we, or I have gotten everything primered twice. I like two coats of primer. And today we're going to start painting. This is just some of the pieces. Um, the rest of it I'll probably paint um, off video. Uh, just because it'll take a long time. But, uh, so, what we, or what I'm going to use, this is actually Mercury Marine Paint. This is, uh, the ID number is 025350. This is Mercury Phantom Black. Okay. Uh, probably, I don't know how well you'll be able to see that. Okay, so and this is for outboard and inboard. This is their marine grain paint. This stuff is actually fairly expensive. I think this one can was 20 bucks or over 20 bucks. Uh, you, to do, this is a small outboard. Like I said, I like to do two coats. Um, you're gonna need quite a few cans, maybe three at the most. Let's say three. I'm sure that you could probably buy this like in a can and use a sprayer. It'd be a little bit more economical. Uh, for right now, if the boat wasn't in the garage, that's actually where I would be spraying this at. No problem. I probably would have, if I could buy that, I don't know if you can, but let's say you can. If I could have, that's what I would have bought. And I would be spraying it in there. I've got really nice spray guns, an air compressor that can handle it, no big deal. That's what I would have done. However, for the most part though, um, I'm doing this all with a rattle can and like I said, so this has been primered, got aluminum primered on it. It got two coats of that before I primered it. I stripped it of all its paint. Um, now, when I strip it like that, most of this is pre-etched. This was etched back when it was done, uh, when it came out of the factory. Um, however, the aluminum primer I'm using uh, contains an etching compound to make it bond to the aluminum. That's why it's aluminum primer. So we're good to go there. Uh, I've let this sit. Most of these parts have sat for actually for a few days now. Um, so it, they're fully cured. They're fully bond. There's no more wet spots. If there was an area that I've missed, I've had time to go over it again. So, but we're going to go ahead. We're going to get to spraying this. Now, I'm gonna, I try to get as good of coating as I can. A lot of times, I might have to go over a piece more than twice. Um, but let's get to that. Don't forget, always make sure you wear a respirator when doing this. Uh, even with aerosols or a spray can, you're going to have overspray. Luckily, I'm in, you know, the uh, open air paint booth, uh, my woodshed. So I actually have plenty of room to do this in. Thankfully that I don't have this full of wood. Because normally this would be full to the top. Uh, so this has worked out really well. So we're going to go ahead and get to spraying. Make sure you do this. Uh, I would say make sure you wear glasses when you do this, you know, eye protection, yada yada. Um, I don't feel like having to clean the paint off these, so I'm going to go ahead and just set them over here. Make sure you mix this really good. I don't know how well you guys can hear it, so make sure you mix this really good. Now, I've already pre-mixed it, but just in case there's some settling and anything like that, always make sure you give your rattle clan a really good mixing. And just a couple times here, I never feel is sufficient. So go ahead and rack that ball around in there for at least a minute. Turn it upside down, you know, maybe 30 seconds this way, 30 seconds that way. So you can get a good thorough mix, and you should be good to go. When you're using, anytime you're, if you're using a spray gun, even a rattle can, don't start spraying directly on that. Give that a couple spurts off to the side, just so that way if there's anything that might be on the nozzle, um, and it kind of can give you a little bit more control, okay? So that way you don't get this real thick, heavy spot right off in the beginning, and you're like, ah, oh, damn it. 
It prevents that. Alright, so this can's almost out. I'm gonna go ahead and get another can. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this stuff up off camera. And um, um, I always think two coats are normally best. After this, though, this isn't done. We are not close to being done at all. And I've got some surprises for you. This thing is going to sparkle when I'm done. And I'm gonna show you guys what I'm gonna do. Everything has been coated. We've got two coats on there. Uh, there was one part uh, that I had a little too much on. I had to kind of sand that down a little bit. Uh, there was just a piece wasn't wanting to fit. Um, so what we're going to go ahead and do now is we're going to clear coat it. As you can see in my hand, I have some silver rainbow holographic metal flake. Make it nice and sparkly. Now what I'm going to use is this is where I'm actually going to use a... Uh, paint sprayer. Um, I'm just using regular latex paint of a clear gloss. See. <clears throat> now I know some people are going to be like, well, why wouldn't you do that? Why wouldn't you just use like, I guess, like a car type deal? Well, this is all everything that I have used so far is something that can be purchased either at Home Depot uh, minus the actual outboard paint. Um, that one had to be ordered specifically. On top of it, I didn't know how much I was going to need, but what I did get is I do actually have some clear acrylic lacquer that is for car paint. Um, so once this is metal flaked, and I like the way it looks and everything, afterwards it will get the final clear coat on it with that. Um, you could probably do it differently using just that. I just didn't want to spend 
that kind of money. And on top of it, I wasn't really sure what to get. And had I, if I could have found it in an actual can that wasn't like a gallon, I don't need a gallon. I needed this quart will probably be more than enough. Um, I'll probably only use about half of this quart, all in all. Probably use half of this quart, and I'm not sure. There's four ounces in this bottle. This one will probably be kind of mixed to judge type of deal, because um, I'm not sure, like, like a tablespoon or this, that, and the other. What I'll do is I'm going to pour some of this clear coat out in a glass or like a cup, and then I'm going to mix this in. I'm going to mix it all up real good and put it in the sprayer, and then I'm going to spray. So when doing that, though, when you use your sprayer, this is the sprayer I'm going to be using, okay? Just standard little Cobalt Home Depot sprayer. I do have a water filter on there. Um, I've made that mistake before of not having one. And when you're spraying and all of a sudden a big old dab of water flies out just because of condensation in the line, that sucks. Um, it gets real irritating. So to prevent that, I got this water sprayer uh, or this uh, inline uh, filter that will absorb any moisture or anything like that. And man, I've got oil all over this. Okay, so when you're going to use something like this, though, normally you have a filter that goes on the inside of there. Uh, I don't know. Mine are like these little plastic filters. They're about yay big. Got a little screen on them. They keep any clogs or anything from going down your gun and spraying out. To spray metal flake, that has to come out. Okay, so you got to take that out because if you think about it, you're trying to spray this metal flake through a screen. It's not going to work. So take the screen out, and you're going to put your stuff in there. But, however, you cannot just, you know, put it in there and then just start spraying because your metal flakes will settle down. And they'll all settle to the bottom, and then you'll have a clog. So what you have to do is you got to kind of swirl that up and around. Ooh, I'm about to fall over. Swirl that up and around, okay? And that will keep your metal flakes suspended and mixed and keep it from settling. And then as you spray, you know, just swirl, spray, swirl, spray. Now, I will say this about metal flakes. I've done this once before. It goes everywhere. So wherever you're going to spray it, as you can see, I've got everything behind me all laid out. I've got plastic up. I'm going to drape it back on that side to keep it from floating in the air because it will. It's going to go all over the place. Um, last time I did this outside, with this, I'm going to do it in the garage. I want it covered, so I want it to be able to sit overnight and then, you know, not have to worry about anything falling on it or me picking it up and moving it and dropping it, so to speak. Um, however, I cleaned the mess out of the floor on this garage. I did not want anything for any reason that when I'm spraying it, all of a sudden some dust would kick up, and then I spray that into the piece I'm, I'm trying to uh, metal flake. And the reason behind that is... If you do that, now you have to try to sand that clear coat off with the metal flake off to get to that whatever you've got on there. And then you got to, it, it's a real pain. Let's just go with that. Real big pain. So, those are the tips I'm going to give you. After that, we're going to go, I'm going to go ahead and start painting. do this correctly. Probably won't need to do this more than once. I don't know how well you guys can see me. It might be kind of dark. So, let's stand up this way. Like I said, if you do this correctly, you might only need to do this maybe once, maybe twice, depending. Maybe you just didn't get a good heavy enough spot. I think I did it pretty well, but uh, let me show you guys what it looks like. Now, I'm in a covered garage, so it's very shady. So, I got a light. Let's take a look.
guys can see oh, oh goodness oh, oh big old wasp Whew. good thing I'm wearing brown shorts Whew. scared the mess out of me all right so now we're gonna let this sit we're gonna let this sit overnight I want it to fully dry all right welcome back it's been about a week since I did the last painting on that. Oh my, that is a big spider. Holy shit. Whoa. These are the factory replica uh, decals for this outboard. Now, you can't get factory originals anymore, so this is your next best thing. They look just like it, no big deal. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to put stickers on here. Now, once I put the stickers on, from there, it will get another coat of this enamel, and that is not only to... Uh, get a nice higher gloss to it, but it is also uh, to protect the stickers from getting scratched or gouged. Um, and then after that, that's done. That is, you know, how you paint it out for it. So let me show you putting these stickers on, and we'll go from there. All right, so we got one of the stickers here. side, okay, and you got the sticky side, alright, peel this off, okay, yeah. alright, once you've got it lined up, this. Secondary layer. Come here. So it started a corner.
voila. There you go. So that is all of the stickers besides a couple, but I think we got the gist. Make sure you line everything up right, and once you get it on, press it in, and then pull off the uh, protective cover, and your sticker's on there, or your decal, whatever you want to call it. Like I said, I'm going to clear coat all of this. Again, probably I'll put a, probably another couple coats of clear coat on there, because I want to protect these stickers. I want to protect that metal flake I got in there. and. Um, after that, the painting is done. Um, from then, I'll be uh, putting it back together, but gotta get my jack plate installed first. So, all right guys.